Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Two new cases keep the spotlight on the COVID-19 virus. Also tonight, lawmakers question the $2 million contract with a Guam company. And the new federal courthouse opens up for business. In sports, the 36th Saipan Fishermen's Association Billfish Tournament is in the books. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Thank you for being here with us. For finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feels so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away, but the change you see, you see me. And I feel alright, dance alright, put a little flavor in my life. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that despite this distance, we are still better together. Dokomo Pacific, better together. Good day, Turawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, July 27th, 2020. Two new individuals have tested positive for COVID-19 in the CNMI. According to CHCC, the two new cases of COVID-19 were identified over the weekend. This brings the total cumulative positive COVID-19 count in the CNMI to 40. Both individuals were tested upon arrival to the Saipan International Airport on Saturday, July 25th, and results came back positive. They were immediately taken to Kanoa Resort for quarantine from the airport. Contact tracing has been initiated by CHCC for the most immediate contacts, such as passengers on the same flight, close family and friends. A company on Guam received one of the largest vendor payments from the CNMI government. Lawmakers question the governor's authorized representative. Sally Lemus reports. We're on our own. Get what you can. We will help you later with the reimbursement process. The governor's authorized representative appeared before the Special House Committee on Federal Assistance and Disaster-Related Funding. Representative Tina Sablon questions the Royal Bix Company contract. Why did you go to a uniform company on Guam for PPEs? Well, um, I don't want to get into it. It could have been anyone, really. Um, my understanding is... Uh, is um, he was, it was a mailman. It was, uh, it was someone connecting us to um, other companies that supplied it or manufactured. I don't know if he went to other suppliers or straight to manufacturers. Patrick Guerrero explains one of their biggest challenges was finding a company in the CNMI that could immediately provide the equipment. Sometimes we took um, time over cost, uh, um, of course, uh, within reasonable cost, but when the whole world was competing for the same commodity, um, and, and maybe as a middleman it was going through five different other suppliers to get to the manufacturer, but somehow they got it done. Uh, they delivered on most of the products that we asked for, 
And for those products that they did not deliver, uh, we canceled out of the contract because we had a time frame as well. A breakdown of expenditures of purchases from Royal Bix amounted to $2.5 million. By the time I had uh, started communications with uh, Bix, um, it was, uh, there was already uh, quotations uh, for these products. And uh, I was more involved, like I said, with logistics and getting uh, and finding out, okay, you're going to supply us um, this many N95 masks, uh, this many surgical masks. Where am I going to go pick it up uh, and when uh, was uh, the extent really of my involvement in, in getting those uh, so who resources you then here? To deal with um, these uh, these quotations were were provided by the task force and Homeland Security. Yeah. Who are the task force? I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Warren Bill Gomez. The committee will continue to conduct oversight on all contracts with the different agencies tomorrow. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemis. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, along with PSS, are hosting a school-based immunization outreach. Here are the details. It's the school-based immunization outreach, getting children up to date on the recommended vaccines for preventable diseases. Primarily for school-age kids, uh, we'll be offering, um, you know, Tdap vaccines, the MMR vaccine, so measles, mumps, rubella. Uh, we'll also be offering HPV vaccines. Um, and for a complete list of these vaccines, I mean, we have information uh, available through CDC, but also available through the program office. Starting tomorrow, July 28th, children who need an updated immunization will be contacted by the child school, where an appointment will be scheduled at one of the 14 public school campuses the program is administered. We wanted to bring the services out to the schools um, to allow more families to access vaccines on a daily basis. For families to get um, onto the schedule for the school-based outreach, um, they will be getting um, communication from their child's school informing them of the date and time that their child is scheduled um, to visit the campus um, to get their updated shot. And I do want to emphasize that the outreach services are for those kids that need vaccines. If a child is already up to date with vaccines and only needs a school health certificate, a parent or guardian can do so by paying a $5 fee and filling out an authorization form online. To find out the date and location of the school-based immunization outreach, visit chcc.gov.mp. The new federal courthouse for the Northern Mariana Islands has officially opened their doors. Located in Gualarai is the new three-story courthouse for the U.S. District Court of the Northern Mariana Islands. And today, they open their doors for official business, something that has been in the works for quite some time. We broke ground December 2017, um, and then of course we've had a few setbacks. Uh, U2 being one of them and of course COVID being another one. So we, we were probably around the finish line in March, which of course is right when COVID happened for us here in Saipan. So a lot of things, we were still trying to push hard, still trying to finish it, but a lot of uh, expertise were coming off island. So the traveling prohibition um, was pushed us back a little, a little further. So we, we, can, we were pretty much done in May, beginning of June of this year. Mariana's Management Corporation is the landlord for the project and is in a 20-year lease with the U.S. General Services Administration, GSA. Uh, we're very excited for this day to finally uh, come to pass. Um, I can speak for our, our management and staff and the, uh, the team that was working on this project that we've been waiting, this for, for, we've been waiting for this for a long time. So to see the uh, U.S. District Court uh, personnel, the judge, the staff move in is... Um, a very significant moment for us in this project. The courthouse houses the U.S. District Court, U.S. Pretrial and Probation Office, U.S. Marshal Service, U.S. Attorney's Office, and the Federal Protective Service. All their offices and personnel are in this building. Um, there's one, um, I guess, one big courtroom that the judge will use for most of her cases. Um, staff offices, um, there's a grand jury room. 
Today, the soft opening ceremony took place for the building management and tenants only. A grand opening ceremony has been pushed to 2021 due to the current COVID-19 pandemic. The district court has been held in the Horiguchi building in Garapan since 1989. The Senate's Fiscal Committee begins discussion on the governor's budget proposal for 2021. Sally Lemus has the story. On Thursday, the Senate Committee on Fiscal Affairs met in the chamber to prepare for their month-long plan in reviewing the governor's budget proposal for fiscal year 2021. Senator Jude Hofschneider says given the reduction of this year's budget, it will need thorough review. We have decided to reserve the month of August for... Uh, uh, meetings with uh, agencies that we'll be writing letters to um, and that would be formulated uh, uh, next week uh, you know which agency is going to come in first and also while the committee awaits the final product from the house they are already looking at key items i'm aware of the challenges uh, this year with the 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 economy itself and the 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 severe reduction in projection but this that just gave us more opportunity to to look at other uh, elements within the the revenue stream as you can tell earlier we were asking about revolving fund the governor had uh, requested for us to uh, for for us to consider suspending some of the earmarks which is substantial it a tune of approximately 12 million dollars and that's the revised uh, figures that was submitted uh, in july 1st uh, 12 million more than what was submitted then uh, earlier in April. So so those are the things that are very crucial to us. Hofschneider says there are significant numbers of furloughed government employees, which is also one priority the committee will be looking into. Those are the things that uh, we need to carefully look through and and, and try to uh, to uh, work to, uh, to, to come up with a, uh, um, an agreeable product. During committee discussion, Senator Sixto Igisomar makes a suggestion to request performance benchmarkings and balances in all revolving accounts. What are you going to do with this? What's your plan? Because the next idea, aside from us suspending it, accruing anything in the next fiscal year, is to do what we did, Chairman, last, last year, where we went in and we encumbered those funds for them to use for the operations, where we cut give them a cut or we tell them go ahead and use that to support your staff. That way we get to understand whether that money is very important for something, whether that money is supposed to pay a liability that's due. It's just that they haven't processed it. So the idea is to send a request to that division director or secretary. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Sally Lemis. Coming up, Governor Torres speaks on the future of the economy in the CNMI. Stay tuned. Did you know CNMI's coral reefs and seagrass ecosystems are worth about $115 million a year? Coral reefs alone are valued over $100 million a year. All the more reason these precious ecosystems must continue to be protected. Coral reefs are important to the people of the CNMI because they provide traditional and subsistence uses, production of commercial food products, recreational opportunities for a healthy tourist economy, and physical protection from storms. Do not break or collect coral to take home with you. We need them. Corals are living animals, and it takes decades to create reef structures. Planting trees, grass, and shrubs on bare soil helps prevent sediment from entering our oceans. Trees also help fight climate change. Use a rain barrel and collect water from roofs, yards, and paved surfaces. You can help keep storm water on your property and pollutants out of waterways by building a rain garden. 
The ocean floor isn't a dance floor. Stepping on corals can break them. Maintain buoyancy when snorkeling or diving. Nutrients from excess fertilizer increases algae growth that blocks sunlight to corals. Coral reefs need clean, clear water to survive. Help keep our beaches litter-free. Always take out your own trash and a little bit more. Anchor in sandy areas away from coral and seagrass or use mooring buoys so the anchor and chain do not drag on nearby corals. Reduce, reuse, rethink, repair, refuse, recycle. Do not feed the fish. Do not take or step on coral. Do not collect shells. Do not fish. Help with local tree planting community events, local beach cleanups, and get involved in protecting your watershed. Participate in training or education programs that focus on reef ecology. You can make a difference. Please contact Mina to get involved in community conservation. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. We have more tonight with Governor Torres as he discusses the economy and the Saipan Casino. Our Chris Nelson has more. With COVID cases increasing around the world, what does that mean for the future economy of the CNMI? Federal assistance has put off some of the most immediate hardship, but what will the island economy look like in the future? Governor Torres says he believes that tourists from Korea could be the first ones back. South Korea has been reporting an average of just over 50 COVID cases per day. The country has a population of 50 million. But realistically, I think South Korea will probably be our, our first uh, market to come in, uh, only because we're having a more discussion. Uh, we're using Sojin, uh, a company out of, of South Korea. Um, so I hope that we're able to bring uh, our tourists back. The challenge is, is getting our first flight in. Once we get our first flight in and we have a good protocol, good results, safety net for our tourists and our locals, then I think other markets will start looking at us and say, hey, you know, the Marianas is safe. You know, Chris, uh, you know, we have uh, people are laid off. Uh, there's no hiding on that. Um, our economy is basically non existence if it wasn't for all the uh, federal assistance that we're getting today, uh, we won't survive at any level. Um, and so now, again, like I said, more than ever, tourism has always been our number one industry here. But with COVID, uh, who's to blame? Uh, at this point, it's not even a matter of blame who, it's where do we go from here as a community, as a government, as a business partners. One important economic driver was supposed to be the Saipan Casino. What is the future of Imperial Pacific? A multi-million dollar payment to the government is due next month. Will it come? The company is currently embroiled in a number of lawsuits alleging non-payment. Construction workers in recent weeks have gathered to protest both working conditions and living conditions. We are frozen. Are they know that our families are hungry in our countries waiting for this money? Whoever froze, let them come and pay us. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. 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 Earlier this month, federal judge Mona Manglonia authorized the seizure of funds from local bank accounts to satisfy a judgment. Governor, what do you think we're, we can see the casino from here? Um, lots of issues going on with the casino, and they've got a big payment that's coming due. What do you what do you see happening? Well, uh, just like every other businesses, there's different challenges. Um, we passed the, the casino, I was in the Senate, uh, in, to assist our retirees. I mean, th that was one of the, the only option at the time to make sure that we protect our retirees, uh, not just the 25%, but the whole 75%. And that was a risk that we took because that was what we looked at, uh, the only opportunity then. Uh, if they close down, it's going to be a really difficult, um, you know, again, challenges uh, for the retirees, for all of us. Uh, at the same time, we can only help as much as we can. Um, COVID issues, I mean, it's out of our hands. Um, so do I you think they're, do you expect them to close down? Well, they're not operational at this point. I know that they have challenges. I mean, we read it in the, in the media and, and so forth. 
I hope that they can uh, meet this year's uh, fee uh, and I hope that we can work something out uh, on what their plans are moving forward but fees has to be paid um, and uh, their taxes as well as and everything else so we understand what is the their payment challenges. that's due that's coming due how much is it's it there is their business license and I believe that's 15 million dollars uh, some part in August which is not too far away from today any indication from them on whether they're going to be able to meet that uh, I have not talked to to them at all uh, in regards to the uh, license uh, fee I'm not sure if they've communicated that with uh, our game Commission Thank you, Chris, for that interview. All right, coming up in the KSPN2 Sports Report, it's the story of the big one that did not get away. We are with you. At times when you need us most, you can count on us to be there. When you need someone to talk to, when you need to stay informed, when you need to brighten your day, when you need to stay connected. We are here keeping our promise that while the world is changing, we keep working so you can keep connecting. We are your Docomo Pacific family, and we are here to help. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat, and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Winigi PHA Pharmacy in Gofanahi, Ihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Buenas sports fans. Buenos sports fans, the 36th Bill Fish Derby was chopped in half like an onion. Just like Major League Baseball, the action was reduced big time to just one day. 11 hours of fishing for all the clams. Good morning. Hey, Hi. good morning. How are you? You're up pretty early. <laughs> 58 boats battled each other and the elements in pursuit of the grand prize. $3,000 for the biggest marlin. More importantly, a championship in this annual Saipan Fishermen's Association's event is a ticket to immortality, a lifetime achievement. Once a branded champion, it sticks with that person for the rest of their lives. What team are you on? Team Hidako-san. What does that mean? Hidako-san. Rising star. Oh. oh. Well, that's better than being a setting star. <laughs> yeah. and, and the entire team, you know, with, with the Victoria herself, with Victoria herself and our son James, that's the, the team Victoria. Four of us have been fishing for several years now, and and that is so important in a, in a team, especially going after big fish. As a previous winner and always doing well, do you feel extra pressure? Yeah, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure, Scott. <laughs> a lot of pressure. Lot of pressure. <laughs> Sniper! Look at this guy. Oh, look at Sniper. How, do, how does it feel to be one of the underdogs? You know, I love being under the dog. <laughs> you never know what you need. Morning. Good morning. How you doing? How are you, what are you guys doing here before you go out? Uh, 
trying to figure out what to, what to send out there. I want to ask you, like, how do you know which is going to be good today? You don't know. That's why you try everything. <laughs> Morning. You're expecting a lot of fish, huh? Oh, yeah. Got to feel this one. When the clock struck 6 a.m., they were off. <laughs> we're number one. We're number one. <laughs> hey, number one. Number one. Hey, hey, good luck. One by one, the boat slipped out of the cove into the lagoon, and then the deep sea. Everyone hoping to be that special winner, no one knowing what the day would bring. It ain't the size of the boat, it's the size of the marlin. That's right. It's hey. gonna be bigger than the boat, Mom. Hey, big, bring it in, John. Jay, tie it up. Jay, hey, Bob! Good morning! Big! Big! big. <laughs> Well, the weather forecast for scattered showers was dead wrong. The sun that day beat down the boats and grilled the anglers fierce. So what? Rough. Rough. Hot. Hot. Tremendously hot. Looks like you got a sun on your face. We had so much fun. The first marlin checked in at Smiling Cove shortly before 2 o'clock on Pete Sablon's boat. Hey, Pete. What's the name of this uh, marlin? Money? Money Mayweather. <laughs> Money Mayweather. Yeah, Tell me about this marlin. Where'd you get it? How long uh, and everything? We caught this guy behind, uh, in the back of the island, the east side. Uh, outside uh, Forbidden, like way, way east. There were still 57 boats out there and three hours to go. I know there's bigger fish out there. The last the last winner was 400 some pounds. This is yeah. uh, 290, so. Captain June Azar Khan was more confident. Did, uh, you think it's a winner? You think it's got a good chance or not? Maybe it's the winner in this one because there's uh, only one day piecing, one day piecing tournament. See, yeah, one day. Yeah, this yeah. is it. One day. What you got? Wahoo! 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 Only one other marlin was brought in. That was 170 pounds on the Sessa. A 10.6 pound yellowfin won first place in a derby that Association President Gene Weaver labeled a success. 58 boats. I am really impressed. You know, um, we was hoping for 40, so again, we broke that record. And you know, with the community out here, I mean, it, you, you can tell by this everybody out there on the finger. I mean, everyone came out to support this and. With everything going on nowadays, I think this is what the community needed. This tournament was different than the others. Instead of being about the fish, it was more about the people. There's a lot of people out here today, and again, uh, people out there barbecuing, just enjoying themselves, watching the boats come in. Kids here, seeing the fish come in. What more could you ask for? Here's the wind-up and the pick. I don't believe what I just saw! Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements today is the first day of the rest of your life. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at marianastrekking.com hours 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at marianastrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. All right, today's high 89, the low 78, heat index 104, humidity up there at 70%. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, isolated showers, possible thunderstorms, 
East winds 5 to 15, I 86, low 76, seas 4 to 5, sunrise 558, low tide 820, high tide 230, and then sunset at 648. So we got some rain coming in. That'll do it for news, sports, and weather on Monday. See you back here Wednesday evening. Thank you for watching.